Go to newbiehack.com to get the ARM STM32 beginner, intermediate, and advanced kits that includes all the components used in these tutorials, see the growing ARM-based microcontroller tutorials, and check out the very popular AVR microcontroller kits and tutorial series. Do a lot talking, got a bad mobile, I'm driving now, do a lot of walking. <laughs> Pinky ring shining with that new chain. Speed through the city like a Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I'll do a lot of talking, got a bad mobile, I'm driving now, do a lot of walking. <laughs> Pinky ring shining with that new chain. In this video, we're gonna make an LED toggle on and off every time we fully depress a push button and we release a push button. I'm gonna add a little bit of complexity to our simple input for push buttons. But because the push button is a mechanical component, we're going to have some problems because mechanically the the signal is going to bounce up and down. So we need to take that garbage out and only consider the pure high or low values on that pin. Push button switches are mechanical components. Within this push button switch you have leads that have contacts at the leads. Then you have a plate this is a very simplistic diagram. And when, the, when you push down on the push button, this conductive plate creates a contact with the two plates that connect to the leads, creating a complete circuit. This action is gonna cause problems electrically because it's mechanical, and mechanical things happen a lot slower than electrical current can. You can have a scenario where this would be a high or a one, a high signal or one. When you press the button to make a contact ground, it will, it should go low, low or zero or vice versa. It could be low, and then when you make contact, it can go to a high signal. That depends on how you have the switch connected. If it's connected to the low when you press it, then it'll go low. If you have it connected to the high when you press it, it'll go high. What is actually happening, however, when you're pressing a push button is it's starting low, and then when you press it, it could be doing some jumps before it gets to the high, to the high digital level. And in software, you're gonna be able to see all of this you're going to see it go from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. And if it goes below the thresholds, then you may see it go back to 0 or not. And then it should, if it's depressed for a period of time, you should see a good signal of high. We would like to eliminate this portion. So when the LED is turning on or is toggling, let's say it's going, uh, the LED is going from off to on. So let's say it starts off. We don't want it to turn on until it passes this threshold here. And I'm going to use a counter to count cycles when this is actually constantly on a high or low signal. I'll count it on a low signal and I'll count it on a high signal. So we'll know if it's not being pressed and it's being pressed. And all this stuff will be eliminated in software. If you look at code online, you'll notice that a lot of people will just implement a delay from when it, when it is pressed, when it, when it thinks it's pressed, like from here, they'll introduce a delay that they know that if it's still pressed over here, then they know it is an actual pressed. But I don't like that technique because what it does, it does two things. It only tests two points to see if it is not bouncing. And it ties up your microcontroller for a specified amount of time, allowing you not to do any other instructions in between that. Alternatively, I would like to have the program on every cycle test either if this is a 1 or a 0. And if it's a 1, every cycle it'll test it again to see if it's another 1. If it's a 0, then it eliminates it. It's not pressed. But when it, when it keeps doing that and it gets to this point, it has to keep doing the cycles until I get maybe 500 or so of these. So I'm able to do other programming within these cycles. I can do all kinds of other code inside of these cycles. With a delay, you'd have to wait from this point to some specified point without doing any instructions or code within the microcontroller. It wouldn't be able to run or execute the code during that time. This is very similar to a state machine where the state machine is cycling through operations and it keeps cycling through and, and it collects data as it goes and responds to that data. We'll get into state machines in more detail in future tutorials. So specifically, how do we do this? We're measuring a zero on the, on the pin, and then we'll have some kind of bouncing going on, and then we'll end up on a high, a high level. 
During this time, we're gonna have we're gonna have a few variables we're gonna be working with. One variable is gonna be obviously it's gonna be button pressed. If it's gonna be equal to a zero or a one, telling me that whether the button is actually pressed or not, and I want to know whether it is actually pressed or not. I mean, when it has a good count of high level, high digital level samples, it will be button pressed one. If it has a good number of samples of a low level, it'll be button pressed zero. So we have to introduce another variable, and we'll call that one button pressed confidence, and button pressed or button released conf confidence level. Let's put a level in here. And what we'll be doing is we'll be counting up the button pressed confidence level when it matches a high level here, and it'll keep making samples until the number of samples is equal to the threshold that we set for the confidence level. And the same thing with the released. When we're testing it, however, we want to make sure that when we're counting the button pressed confidence level, that's going to be just a counter. We want to count it while the button pressed is zero because we don't know if it's one yet. So while the button pressed is zero, we'll start counting. It could be counting here, but then maybe it doesn't, um, it shows a zero, so it has to eliminate that confidence level and the confidence level goes back down to zero. So while the button pressed is equal to zero and it matches a good number of samples for the button pressed or a high level, then we can turn the button pressed variable to one. And the same goes for the button released confidence level. When it's pressed over here somewhere, and then it starts to do some bouncing, and it finally gets to zero, we want to eliminate all of this bouncing as well. We don't want any of this. So we're going to do the same thing. If it's button pressed is one, then when it gets through enough samples for when the button is released, then we can say that the button pressed is equal to zero, meaning that the button released, the button is released. When the button pressed is equal to, to one, when we know that the confidence level is, is high enough beyond our threshold, we will set the button pressed to one, and then at that particular point, we will toggle the LED. So we'll turn it either on or off. If it was on, then we'll turn it off. If it was off, then we'll turn it back on. So every time you're pressing the button and releasing it, it'll turn on, press it, release it, it'll turn off, press it, release it, it'll turn on, and so on. So we'll have to introduce code to toggle the LED as well. So let's start with a program that we had from the previous video. We're including the necessary header file. We're enabling the two ports that we need, port C and port B. We're setting up port C pin six to be output because we're using that to shine the LED. The output type being push pull, the speed at high speed, output speed, and the pull up and pull down register is none. On port B, pin one, we are setting up the mode to be input, and we're also not setting a pull up or pull down resistor internally because we're doing that externally on the input pin with the 220K resistor. And this is the code where you test whether the pin has a high level digital signal or one on it. And we're turning on the LED if it's one, and we're turning off the LED when it's not one. So this is just a simple, if you press the button, it turns the LED on. If you release the button, it turns the LED off. In this case, we want to press it and then turn it on. Press and release, it turns on. And we want to press and release and it turns off. So I'm going to eliminate this code right now because we don't really need it yet. We'll be using it in our toggling of the LED. So let's write some pseudocode within this portion here. So when we know that the that pin is receiving a one on it, we need to measure the confidence of that or increase the confidence. Once the threshold for the confidence level has been reached, we can toggle the LEDs. When there is a zero coming in on that pin, we want to increase the button released confidence level. In both of these, we're going to have to include some kind of variable to 
show us the state of the button pressed once the, co the confidence level has been reached. So we'll call that button pressed. In the released portion, once the button released level, confidence level, we want to update the button pressed variable to zero. We want these variables to lie outside of the while loop because we don't want to keep initializing it while we're in our infinite loop. So we need to do that over here. We only want to do this code when the button when the button pressed variable is equal to zero because we're trying to get it to the we're trying to make this button press variable equal to one so it must be zero when we're doing this portion of the programming it doesn't make sense to run this part of the code when the button pressed variable is equal to one already it's just a waste of of cycles for the processor and it's not necessary and it could cause the toggling of the LEDs to happen when you don't want it to happen. So let's go ahead and put in that code. So if the button press variable is zero, then do this stuff. Else, we're going to make it so if the is one, then we can do this code because it doesn't make sense to turn it into a zero, the button press variable to a zero, if it's already zero. So we want to make sure that it's one and not run this code unnecessarily. This is all the pseudocode we, we really need, and it should be self-explanatory. In the next video, we'll start getting into the real code. And also, we'll do some testing to make sure that the button is functioning properly and we get rid of all of the bouncing from the button presses. Go to newbiehack.com to get great tutorials on the AVR and ARM platform. Stay tuned for more ARM videos and pick up an ARM or AVR kit to enable you to learn the proper fundamentals of these microcontrollers. Thank you for watching.